Hello, welcome. Welcome to worship at First Christian Church Disciples of Christ in Pasadena, Texas. Today is May 29th, 2022. My name is Judy Dalton. I'm senior pastor at First Christian Church, and I am delighted to welcome you into worship service. Please leave a comment so that the church might know you're worshiping with us this week. We at First Christian Church of Pasadena, Texas are doing uh, the right thing by our neighbors. At least we try. That's why we've obtained the correct licensing for the recording and sharing of this worship service. Our CCLI number is 439-1628. If you have a candle, I invite you to light yours as I light mine. By doing so, we remind ourselves that we are not worshiping solo, but we are part of a larger community of faith. And we also remind ourselves of God's everlasting presence with us. This summer, I'm on sabbatical. My sabbatical runs from May 1st to July 30th. But our congregation decided that we really wanted to keep an online presence, even in my absence. So I've recorded a series of stories. Um, the services are much shorter than normal. Um, but at least it gives you a scripture, a song, and a story to carry with, to carry with you through the week. Today's story is a special one uh, to me. I can't remember where I heard it or read it. I've looked for it in all of my favorite storybooks. I can't find it anywhere. So I'm going to do my best to remember the details and share them with you. But right now, let's hear the word of the Lord as it comes to us from 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Once upon a time, there was a new pastor in town, and she took time to visit the members of her congregation. If she was invited, she would go to their homes. She noticed after many months of being the pastor that this one man We'll call him John. John was a regular at all of the um, outreach events. If someone needed their yard mowed, John was there to mow the yard. If they took canned goods to the local food pantry, John was there to help carry things. Um, if there was a tutoring program, John volunteered to, to uh, help children with math and, and also hand out snacks. The pastor really appreciated all John did. but She was rather worried because John never came to the prayer services. John never came to Bible studies. John never came to corporate worship. Every Sunday, she looked and looked for John, nothing. One day, the pastor called John and said, can I come visit you? And he said, sure. 
but you'll have to come to my workshop because I'm, I'm working. And so uh, she said, sure thing. She got his address and she drove on over. Now, John made custom furniture out of wood. He was a carpenter and an artisan. He made beautiful chairs, gorgeous tables. I mean, really fine work. He, he, um, he carved and he had lots of tools, but he really liked to take his time and put his own um, artistry into every piece he made. It was all custom work, very posh. So he proudly showed the pastor, you know, what he was working on and some of his uh, other things that were still waiting on, on the owners to come collect. And, and the pastor was very impressed with John's handiwork. And uh, after it, his work was complete, they went inside and he offered her a cup of coffee. And well, she said, sure, I'm not turning down coffee. So they sat at the table and we're having some coffee. And she said, John, why don't you come to worship? Why don't you come to the prayer services or, or the Bible studies? I, it would be really nice to see you. And he said, well, I'll tell you, Pastor, I've made some really bad mistakes with my life. Some poor choices that haunt me. Um, I'm not worthy to go to church for worship. I'm not worthy to sit in the sanctuary and, and pretend I, I'm good enough to be there. Um, she nodded and paused, sipped her coffee and said, John, I noticed that in your workshop were all kinds of beautiful pieces of furniture who taught you how to make this? Oh, my, my, my father taught me and his father taught him and his father taught him. Uh, you know, we go way back. Um, and she said, do you have anything from your ancestors? Oh, yeah, yeah. He brought out a gorgeous little chest, uh, like a, maybe a jewelry box or, or anyway, it was a little box about yay big. And uh, he explained that his great, great, great grandfather had made this and brought it uh, to America when he emigrated. And uh, the pastor looked at it and appreciated its, its beauty and, and its history. And she said, I noticed there's a nick in it. And he said, oh yeah, I mean, there are scratches and nicks and and you know all kinds of um, of of um, troubles. You know, uh, this is it's been around for a long time, and and not everybody handles it with the same care I try to. I mean, my goodness, we we put our toys in it when we were children. Of uh, you know, of course, it's going to have a few flaws. Um, and the pastor said, "But John, it's not." perfect. It's not worthy of, and he said, oh, I see where you're going. She said, now, John, if we're going to apply what you said to this box, this box is, it's going to have to go. And he said, no, I can't think. I can't even imagine getting rid of something um, anybody who looks at this knows that this is a fine piece of furniture. It was crafted with love and yeah, it's got a few flaws in it, but it's still a great box, a great chest, and it can still do wonderful work. And she said, so can you. We all have flaws. We've all made mistakes and no one is worthy of God. But that's not what God's looking for. God's looking for relationship. And the next Sunday, 
John was there, sitting in a pew with his hymnal and his Bible, ready to worship. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now say, am I? Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. All my heart to him I give, ever to him I'll cling. In his blessed presence live, ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true merits my soul's best songs. Faithful loving service to, to him belongs. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. And now I invite you to the table of love. God, for this loaf and this cup we give you thanks. Bless them and bless us. Help us to receive the good news to remember and to believe that you love us always. Amen. We remember that on the night Jesus sat at table with his disciples, he took the bread of their meal and he blessed it, giving thanks to God. And then he gave it to the disciples. He said to them, this is my body given for you. Eat of it. Do this in remembrance of me. In a similar manner, after supper, Jesus took the cup. After giving thanks to God, he gave the cup to the disciples and he said to them, This is the cup of the new covenant, my blood Pour it out for the forgiveness of your sins, so drink of it, all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray the way our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to follow Jesus. If you want to be a Christian, if you're looking for a church, a faith community, please call First Christian Church at 281-991-4585 and someone will speak to you about this. And if you're already a disciple of Christ, recommit your life to Jesus today and put your faith into action. Read Psalm 1. Contact the church, you've got the phone number, and find out what the outreach is going to be for June and that way you can help and contribute something um, that way. Don't forget to give to your local congregation or First Christian Church of Pasadena. Our mailing address and Venmo information are located on our Facebook page. Until next week, remember I love you and I pray for you every day. Be safe, be smart, and be aware of God's Spirit leading you this week and always. God bless you.